July 2007, a group of 13 of us from the Mangambi Picnic Club made uh, a bus trip from uh, Cairns to the Gulf Carpentaria region uh, along the Savannah Way. Part of it was motivated by the fact that uh, 40 years ago, Kay and I lived at uh, Kidston for a few months while I uh, drilled out what was later to prove a major gold ore body, the Kidston Gold Mine. Uh, Kay came up to live at the uh, Kidston drill site uh, uh, straight after Simon was born. In fact, he was only a couple of weeks old, three weeks old, when uh, she arrived up there in the bush. We lived in what had been a policeman's house and uh, had uh, some amenities, but it was pretty rough living with uh, a group of a dozen or so men and a driller's camp set uh, up around the project area a kilometre or two away. The main feature of the area then, uh, and the only real remnant of those days, is the old uh, battery, the gold uh, stamp that uh, existed from the early 1900s through to about the 1950s. We did visit a similar one which was in good working order on the first day out on our trip uh, near Chiligo. Uh, Kidston is actually on the Copper Mine River which uh, flows into the Inersley and ultimately uh, flows out to the Gulf uh, uh, south of Weeper or just north of the uh, southeastern corner of the Gulf. This is where the uh, little fishing and export port of Karumba now stands at the mouth of the Norman River and uh, it was to the north of this that uh, Abel Tasman uh, landed I think in 1641 uh, the Inersley River actually flows northwest from the uh, region of Inersley and uh, Forsyth and the like um, to the Gulf uh, where it actually joins the Gilbert River. Uh, that's the area where um, uh, Leichhardt actually uh, had a base camp back in the years 1845. Other big uh, rivers that flow into the southern section of the Gulf from Carpentaria are the Flinders River which is actually the one Burke and Wills followed uh, to the uh, brackish waters of the Gulf. And the Albert River to the west, 100, 130 kilometres to the west, which is the one on which uh, Burke Town was later established as a port. Um, that's the river that Burke and Wills actually thought they'd come out upon. The um, Albert River was explored in 1841 uh, by the uh, a Beagle expedition uh, with Charles Darwin, or at least its uh, long boat, um, went up river some hundred kilometres or so. And it's further upstream from this uh, that we visited the Lawn Hill National Park and uh, the Riversley fossil deposits. That's the area upstream where the um, Century Zinc deposit is now developed. In fact, the uh, zinc concentrates from the Century Zinc mine are uh, piped as a slurry 300 odd kilometres to Karumba for um, export. Um, so the dominant feature of the wharves at uh, Karumba today are the uh, uh, tank, um, tankers that come in for um, the zinc concentrate. Apart from that of course there are uh, prawn boats and there's a research uh, operation for Barramundi at uh, Karumba. The only other work that I've done in the region was about 1969 uh, when with the Anaconda Company I did some uh, surveys around the uh, gunpowder and mount oxide mines, copper and uh, well, mainly copper occurrences, um, the headwaters of the uh, river that runs down ultimately into Burketown. The um, early explorers in this region, including uh, Flinders in 1802 and the investigator, uh, were fairly impressed with the uh, plains, uh, alluvial plains of these big, big rivers running into the southern portion of the Gulf of Carpentaria. And in fact, uh, they were referred to as the Plains of Promise. Now today, a good seasonal cattle country, uh, particularly now that the Santa Gertruda has been introduced into the region because the uh, uh, wet season grasses are fairly coarse and tick and other problems are not suitable 
to the cattle that um, were first tried. Our trip, trip took us um, west from Cairns to Chiligo on the first night. We then used the uh, rail car to get down to Mount Surprise and travelled by road out uh, westerly uh, through Georgetown, uh, Normanton to the Gulf at Corumba. We then went westerly across these plains of promise south of the um, Gulf of Carpentaria to Burketown, um, turning down river down the Nicholson essentially uh, to visit the areas before mentioned, the Thornhill Gorge um, and also the uh, Riversley fossil occurrences. Um, then back through the Birken Wills Roadhouse and along the development road uh, past the Bang Bang Jump Up and uh, on to Normanton again. Uh, from Normanton we crossed easterly again uh, through Georgetown uh, and down to Forsyth um, and then to the Cobalt Gorge on Robin Hood Station which is uh, along the Robinson River. This is where I made myself famous by uh, climbing a quartz outcrop with the rest of the group and then proceeding to jam a foot in a uh, crevice and make a rather spectacular fall of three or four metres uh, of quartz blow through a bush and down onto the uh, ground below. Fortunately, uh, I was uninjured. Um, we were able to carry on and uh, return to Forsyth on to Inersley, go down to Kidston um, and refresh our uh, memories of that place. Surprised as we were by the two huge open pits which have um, a legacy now of the gold mining in that region. Uh, from then we went out to the Lind and up to the Andara caves, the lava tubes that uh, spread from uh, the Andara volcano over the last 15,000 years or so and uh, on from that through the Atherton Tablelands and down to the coast at Port Douglas. Uh, the Birken Wills expedition was 1861 and it was in 1866 that uh, Richard Daintree, the geologist, explored the uh, central areas around the Etheridge River, Georgetown, uh, etc. and uh, made the first discoveries of copper. Uh, later, in 1869, Richard Daintree um, reported gold on the Gilbert River also, and it was those discoveries that led to the Kidston Rush around the turn of the century, when upwards of 5,000 people were focused in a tent city around Kidston. It mined in a desultory fashion through to the 1950s, and then saw renewed interest uh, with exp exploration by uh, company scale operators in the uh, 1970s, including ourselves, 1967, and uh, became a worthwhile mining operation when the price of gold moved up in the late 1980s. Kidston has now ceased operation. Uh, Kidston is in the older rocks of the region, sort of more than a billion years old, these are extensive uh, west of the Divide, and, or should I say west of the Chiligo region. Um, they date more than 1,500 million years for the most part and involve metamorphic rocks and uh, very altered rocks containing the zinc deposits of Century, for example. In the region of Lawn Hill Gorge, there are some magnificent uh, deltaic sandstones and siltstones showing uh, ripple bedding, mud cracks and similar features, just a few salt casts, indicative of a deltaic environment uh, that existed there about 1,500 million years ago. At Kidston, the older rocks exist uh, and a fault cuts through the zone where the um, open cuts are nowadays. But the gold itself was introduced by um, volcanic rocks of much younger age, only about 300 million years. These were reasonably widespread through the province and were a great explosive volcanic caldera which introduced uh, gold and some uranium locally. The copper of uh, the Angeli copper mines which uh, 
worked in the early days and fed their um, concentrates up the rail line to Chiligo, where the smelter operated for many years. They are part of the older rock sequence. Um, more discoveries have been made of recent date and it's expected that copper mining will again start uh, in the vicinity of Ainsley Town. Early in our trip, uh, we visited the terrestrial centre at Georgetown, which is a very fine collection of minerals, uh, mostly uh, focused around the agates and uh, amethystine quartz, um, which occur in the uh, area south of Georgetown, associated with the, the 1500 million year old volcanics. It is these rocks which were the host for the gold deposits of Croydon, um, and other areas um, of the uh, Georgetown inlier, as it's known. This is the region of very old rocks, older than uh, 1.5 billion years. The deltas of this age uh, around Lawn Hill National Park are very picturesque. Uh, the river itself, uh, some lovely water holes, and uh, we were based at the camping centre at Adele's Grove, and were able to paddle canoes on the river, uh, examine the beautiful red sandstone sequence on various walks, and uh, really get a wonderful opportunity to look at the geology of the region. The satellite image of this region shows um, Adele's Grove in the, uh, on the right hand side, um, and the rivers running northward to the Gulf. Now, there's been some extraordinary situation of river capture along Waterlon um, Creek region uh, where it meets with the headwaters of the uh, uh, river running down through Adele's Grove. You can see how rivers appear to cross in this locality. That's obviously due to relatively recent faulting and uh, the headward erosion of one river resulting in the capture of another. Uh, to the west of the gorge area that we visited uh, in the region of Colley's Creek you have outcrops of Cambrian limestone which give a sort of dendritic drainage pattern 500 million years or 550 million years old very fossiliferous and also phosphatic so that they've been used um, as the source of um, uh, phosphate for the uh, agricultural industry. Uh, to the right we can see the road going south uh, to Riversley, which we followed uh, on our route to uh, examine the ancient fossils of that locality. Uh, this photo is actually a view of Riversley, uh, but looking um, westward across the Cambrian limestones, uh, 550 million years old. There were very, very broad expanses of uh, shallow seas across the Australian continent at that time, 550 million years ago, extended right through the uh, centre of the country and down into the Flinders Ranges. Uh, it was only uh, the eastern section of Australia that was uh, missing sediment from uh, about the Grampians eastward. It was uh, um, primordial ocean, you might say, uh, so that much of the ocean floor was newly formed volcanic or basaltic rocks. Uh, this line I've just mentioned is effectively the eastern edge of the very ancient continent. Uh, we can use the word Gondwana, but there have been series of mega continents. There was an older one, Rodinia, and these continental margins were more or less coincident. The eastern margin of the Australian continent, at about a billion years ago, uh, ran northwards from the Grampians to approximately Chiligo. And we have a history of recording the edge of this continental mass to be read from the rocks around Chiligo or in the Hodgkinson Basin between Chiligo and the coast. To, to the west was the ancient formed continent with uh, granite rocks intruded about 1500 million years ago and the volcanic sequence which gave rise to the gold of the Etheridge Goldfield. Um, then came the depositional phase, uh, notably around 434 million years ago, when the Chiligo region formed the margin of the continent, dropping off to quite a deep ocean floor uh, very rapidly. There were, however, 
fossil coral reefs, which today form the marbles of the Chiligo region, marbles of the limestones uh, in which the Chiligo caves occur. We visited the caves. You don't get a good idea of the fossils unless you uh, look carefully at slabbed limestone, cut uh, as much as it has been for industry. It's altered to a marble by having been crushed against the edge of the continent uh, some 400 uh, uh, million years ago and uh, that's uh, characterised by a whole series of steep dipping faults, much crushing and pressure phenomena within the rocks, hence the change of that limestone to marble, the Chiligo marble. Many uh, situations in the area where you can see test pits have been dug to sample the marble uh, to test its quality. Around 300 million years ago, or more precisely 286 million years ago, uh, volcanics and granites intruded the area again as a result of uh, plate tectonic movements and uh, it is those that gave rise to the gold occurrences at Kidston. And so at Chiligo we have the outstanding um, reef limestones, many of them uh, standing in a vertical position because they've been crushed up against the continent. At equivalent in age, or approximately equivalent to the uh, great delta of the Grampians. The outstanding topographic features uh, caused, or due to the uh, marbles, are uh, uh, jagged peaks that are really partially collapsed cave features or karstic weathering that develops as a result of solution of limestone by the very active um, waters of the uh, uh, groundwaters and uh, rainfall of the uh, of tropical areas. New uh, extensions of the caves have constantly been formed very gradually uh, by solution during the wet seasons. Water is continually percolating down, keeping them humid uh, and forming stalactites and stalagmites by uh, the uh, dripping waters uh, saturated with lime. The uh, fossils in these marbles, when they're um, apparent, are commonly uh, little circular or perhaps columnar structures, which are part of a, uh, a crinoid or a sea lily, I think they sometimes referred to. Uh, they're an organism related to the starfish and have uh, uh, essentially arms that uh, wave from a cup-like feature that's rather flower-like and this long stem of articulated uh, lime, lime fragments is what uh, is readily preserved as a fossil. These are Silurian in age and over 400 million years. Uh, this diagram features them centrally. Uh, it also shows uh, lump-like um, coral colonies. These were the, normally the tabulate corals, uh, perhaps some tetracorals in those days, which are uh, extinct today. Uh, the early armoured fish, which had uh, small hard plates instead of scales, and those plates have been found in the Grampians Delta sediments. Here then is another diagram showing the older crustal rocks being thrust over these uh, newly formed sediments some 400 million years ago, uh, resulting in uh, overthrust structures, steep dips and uh, extensive faulting, which accounts for the deep burial of the limestone and its uh, alteration to marble. The uh, complex of marble blocks and shales is referred to as the Chiligo Formation, which was deposited in the Hodgkinson Basin. Here then is another diagram showing the older crustal rocks being thrust over these uh, newly formed sediments some 400 million years ago, uh, resulting in uh, overthrust structures, steep dips and uh, extensive faulting, which accounts for the deep burial of the limestone and its uh, alteration to marble. The uh, complex of marble blocks and shales is referred to as the Chiligo Formation, which was deposited in the Hodgkinson Basin, east of a line uh, which was a major fault now known as the Palmerville Fault. 
This next diagram uh, shows the relationship of the Palmerville Fault to the uh, ancient continent forming its eastern edge and the drop off to the deep ocean basin of the Hodgkinson. As time developed, further uh, plate tectonic collisions resulted in the uh, formation of the granitic rocks and volcanic rocks in the Permian era some uh, 300 million years ago, as shown on the right hand side of this diagram. At this time, uh, the Australian continent, of course, was part of Gondwana, which was uh, extensively glaciated, so that there were thick uh, ice caps covering the southern half of the continent, uh, region of the Grampians, um, southern New South Wales, as far north as Sydney, uh, and wide areas of um, Western Australia, including the Kimberleys. At the same time, too, at the fringes of the ice sheet, uh, the big coal basins were developing for the Bowen, the Hunter and uh, regions of central New South Wales and western Queensland. As I mentioned before, these uh, volcanics in the uh, north Queensland region were responsible for great explosive features, breccia pipes such as Kidston, which is mineralised with gold. This is an aerial view of the uh, two open pits that have, been, that have been developed at Kidston. Some 15 tonnes of gold were extracted there. This little diagram uh, indicates how the current landforms are influenced by the older geology. The Chiligo marbles um, form jagged outcrops shown in the west here by these lenses of brickwork. Um, some of the volcanics, which are flat-lying ash beds, form low rounded hills, while others are uh, more bouldery in character, in fact tours uh, erode from the uh, granite bodies which were intruded 300 million years ago. A typical uh, tour hill developed on granite uh, shows these great boulders resulting from the natural jointing of the rock which has been influenced by weathering and gradually rounded off in place. Uh, Charters Towers, in fact, was supposed to have been named Charters Tours, but the uh, surveyor's assistant apparently didn't understand the word tours, and it was uh, registered as towers uh, when uh, he was making his report. This diagram illustrates how the uh, natural jointing of the rock, formed by the relief of the enormous load of 5 to 10 kilometres of rock which once uh, rested above it, when it was intruded as a magma, molten 600 degrees, um, gradually crystallising in over millions of years perhaps to form very coarse feldspar quartz and micas, uh, typical granite, granite with um, uh, crystals up to a centimetre in size, uh, but the jointing developed in a regular way as a result of the cooling and now it's been exposed and subjected to uh, chemical weathering as a result of the intensive wet seasons, you tend to get a rounding off and the formation of tors in the regolith or in the subsoil. Another form of weathering, I suppose, is uh, damage and gradual decay to the copper smelter at Chiligo. This was the central hub of operations uh, sustained by uh, the Queensland government in order to keep the mining industry going in the north for many, many years from the 1900s through to the 1920s, it operated on parcels of ore brought in from hundreds of kilometres away, for example, um, Inersley. Uh, this view is a roadside billboard of our travel along the uh, Savannah Way, showing most of our stop-off points, Chiligo, Mount Surprise, through Georgetown and Croydon, Normanton, to the Gulf at uh, Carumba, and onwards uh, beyond to the southwest in the region of Gregory Downs and Lawn Hill. On our return through Georgetown and Forsyth, uh, we went down to the Cobalt Gorge uh, along the uh, Robertson River. And uh, here we had marvellous exposures of uh, uh, 150 million year old sandstones, the Jurassic Age, Age of Dinosaurs. Um, 
beautiful pebble beds and cross uh, stratification resulting from uh, uh, currents in an inland sea or delta, uh, which is the main sandstone unit of the uh, Great Artesian Basin, the aquifer, which uh, provides so much water out in uh, southwestern Queensland and through into South Australia. The Cobalt Gorge is another example of a uh, uh, geomorphic feature formed by river capture. It's very close to the um, Robertson River, but it happens that two of the tributaries have recently uh, uh, eroded themselves one into the other and the water of the major stream captured by a smaller uh, rivulet has resulted in, uh, in much greater erosional power and cut this very steep sided of gorge which is a very attractive tourist spot and exposes the uh, sandstones in a spectacular fashion. 140 million years ago the sandstone spread across the entire region and covered a deep fault in the basement which runs along the Robertson River. With the uplift of the Great Dividing Range, the sandstone has been stripped off most of the highland areas and of course we see those uh, granite tours and the uh, outcrops of limestone at Chiligo uh, where the sandstone has been entirely removed by erosion. This uh, next slide shows the uh, Jurassic sandstone known as the Hampstead sandstone um, in the region of Cobalt Gorge with the fault um, parallel to the Robinson River uh, which ultimately uh, displaced the sandstone and caused its uh, erosion and removal on the eastern side. So the right hand side of this diagram has nowadays been stripped right back uh, to the exposed older bedrock and none of the sand is preserved. Whereas west of the fault in the region of Cobalt Gorge um, we have quite a thick sequence of the Jurassic sand. These are the uh, uh, units which further south produce dinosaur remains um, around Hewenden and further south in Queensland. Weathering and erosion continued uh, relentlessly for um, the next few hundred million years essentially, although there was considerable disruption at the time when uh, Gondwana broke up uh, which started a hundred million years or so ago and at that stage the continental plate of Australia warped, twisted and buckled in various ways and uh, uh, new relief was formed as I mentioned before the uh, Great Dividing Range also the uh, uh, Coral Sea and the uh, uh, Queensland Rise offshore in the Tasman Sea all developed as a result of broad warping. With the breakup of Gondwana, the Australian continent uh, was essentially uh, tropical or temperate rainforest, and very good records of this from 60 million years ago occur at uh, Riversley, just near the uh, Century Zinc Mine. Uh, beautifully recorded uh, specimens of early mammals uh, and also uh, at various stages from the order of 12 million years right to the last 1 million years of uh, uh, marsupial faunas and bat faunas uh, preserved in old lake bed deposits uh, which uh, uh, are rather unique in the character of the preservation of fossils. I'm uh, standing here just illustrating uh, a type section of the area with some of the uh, bold outcrops of the uh, ancient lake beds behind me. In detail, these demonstrate the uh, ancient uh, uh, megafauna, particularly the large bird and uh, ancestor of the crocodiles, and fl large flightless bird, very much heavier than the current day uh, emu. This particular outcrop uh, uh, shows in detail the bone structure of the very heavy legs of this uh, uh, land-bound bird. Uh, they've constructed here a uh, uh, very echo-sensitive uh, cave which is uh, done from uh, concrete. It looks like the uh, 
naturally occurring outcrops. Left hand side of this picture is the uh, um, structure, whereas the right hand side is a boulder that's fallen from the ancient lake beds above. It is then with the uh, fracturing and breakup of Gondwana a hundred million years ago that uh, much of the present topography had its formation. The first phase was a general doming of the uh, crustal rocks of northern Australia. This was probably due to a hot spot or uh, upwelling of uh, heated material from the Earth's mantle. As a result of the uh, tension so created, various crustal blocks subsided to give you major features in the um, geomorphology of the region. Thus we see the development of the Atherton Tableland, the Queensland Trough and Queensland Plateau offshore, the Coral Sea Basin uh, and other features of the, uh, uh, that create the major topography or major geomorphic features of North Queensland. Subsequent to this, of course, we've had the Ice Age over the last two and a half million years in which sea levels have fluctuated uh, 20 or 30 times. It's only in the last of these, over the last 10,000 years or so, that the uh, Great Barrier Reef has developed on this edge of the uh, uh, Queensland Trough. Our first contact with the recent lavas uh, that have uh, spread about North Queensland uh, was at Inersley where the river is choked with a lava flow that has since been breached by the uh, river. Forms a cliffs of two or three metres high and very, very nice exposures of the uh, basaltic lava flow wending its way down from the Andara region where the extensive uh, lava and ash flows have developed over the last million years or so. This picture shows in red uh, the distribution of the uh, McBride Volcanic Province and in particular the Andara Volcanic Field which is where the lava tubes uh, that uh, um, create such a great tourist venue. In more detail we see here the um, uh, lava field with uh, the Andara Volcano outlined with a black triangle and the red uh, lava flows extending westerly uh, down to the area called the Wall. This is a very distinctive basalt ridge running westerly uh, from the region of Mount Surprise. And in fact, it's been used uh, because of its similarity to structures on Mars to uh, interpret exactly why you see such long linear features in basaltic flows. The lava tubes develop uh, as a result of the molten lava running down the old river valley and congealing or setting on the surface and the margins around the colder rocks at the base of the flow, leaving the uh, molten red hot lava flowing as a river through the center, forming its own natural pipe or conduit. When these cool, uh, you get lava tubes or big uh, linear cave-like features. These can extend up to 16 or 20 kilometers long in this area. Um, they're perhaps 18,000 years old, maybe younger than that. This next uh, picture illustrates the uh, features uh, quoted here as 190,000 years, but it's now known that the age of these is probably only of the order of 19,000 years. Um, so very, very recent volcanism, some of the youngest volcanism in Australia, and these are some of the longest lava tubes in the world. Uh, this, uh, this is an aerial view uh, looking along the collapsed lava tube system and rainforest is preserved in the areas where the roof is caved in, giving these dark patches in the landscape stretching away uh, 10 or 15 kilometres to the right hand side of the picture. This is a view from within one of the lava tubes looking at a breakthrough in the roof and uh, we're actually looking at glass on the underside. The uh, temperatures have been about 1100 degrees centigrade, sufficient to remelt sections of the basaltic roof which had, had set hard previously. And hence, in places, you get uh, stalactites of glass um, dropping down towards the floor of the lava tubes. Uh, this again is a satellite image uh, looking down upon the uh, 
uh, dotted pattern of dark uh, uh, rainforest, which is the uh, linear extent of the lava tube extending from right to left across the diagram. On the left hand side is the famous lava wall that has been compared to the structure on Mars. Other volcanic features of the Atherton Tablelands in include uh, uh, ash cones and scoria cones and of course uh, some of the very uh, deep explosive vents that uh, feature amongst the rainforest of the um, Tablelands. Uh, the very last features that uh, were remarkable to us on this trip out near Burketown, the uh, serpentinous character of the river system running into the southern portion of the Gulf of Carpentaria and the town of Burketown itself in the bottom right hand corner of the picture which is now on an oxbow of the river or a, a billabong of uh, kilometric size which has been cut off by a flood system running uh, directly through the meander leaving Burketown no longer accessible to the sea. It was uh, during the late 1880s and early 1900s quite an active port uh, for the uh, stations in the Gulf of Carpentaria region. No longer, since it does not have access to the coast. Today the main street of Burketown um, can be uh, flooded with a, a series of road trains carrying the uh, Santa Catrula cattle to market. Heavy rains prior to the time we were there, probably wet season rains of um, uh, January, February 07, resulted in these enormous alluvial deposits uh, crossing the road on the Gregory River. Uh, maintaining a road system can be very, very awkward in the wet seasons of the Carpentaria Gulf. So from uh, features of the uh, modern landscape, its rivers and its uh, hills, back through the volcanic periods of uh, perhaps half a million years, 300 million years and 1500 million years that we've described on this trip. Um, we've seen a great variety of rock types and have enjoyed immensely the geological diversity of North Queensland.